Sanders, it is Mrs. Mount here, and we are out in the beautiful wilderness world that we have. And we are here today. We are going to collect some dandelions and make some dandelion play doh. And we're also going to deliver some of the rocks that we painted on Monday. Stay tuned, friends. Let's go pick some dandelions. Okay, so let's pick some dandelions and get their beautiful natural color for our Play-Doh. And I'm only really taking the, the heads of them. And we'll just keep walking. I dropped one. Look at that beautiful color. It's stunning. This is going to make the most beautiful colored Play Doh I've ever seen in my entire life. I'm so excited! Those ones are a little bit smushed, so I don't really want to use those because I want to make sure they have that the nice color. Then I'm going to go need to drop these off in the bucket because my hand is getting full. I don't. Alright, let's go and put this amount in the bucket and then we will continue getting some more hand designs. Or you can leave a nice message for a loved one at their home. La la. Be very careful when you are picking these dandelions and walking through the grass or wherever you're walking, make sure you have something on your feet because you never know if you're going to step on glass or you never really know what's out here. There could be dog poop or anything really. There's so many in such a short little area. It's awesome. Hmm. See that one's like a little bit brownish so I don't really want to... don't want to take that one. Take the stems off of those because we don't need those. Just need the end for the beautiful color. Yellow is my favorite. So bright and cheery. Alright, 
let's head back to Mr. Mount with the bucket and we'll pick some up as we go and we'll see. I think we're probably close to close to being full. We're having enough that we need anyways. This is the perfect time to do this activity because in the spring, dandelions sprout like crazy. Oops, I dropped one. All right, let's put some in our bucket and see how much we have. That's a pretty good amount, my friends. But I think we are going to go to a different field and we are going to get a little bit more. Or you can share your rocks and your love at your school. My friends, look at this beautiful patch we found. And it goes for that entire field. We are actually here at the field behind where Mr. Mount and I went to high school. All right, let's get to some picking. And as Mr. Mount and I just discussed, it's okay if they get squished because they're only going to get squished later on in the process anyways. you can put them at a beautiful place in your local park and share the beauty with everyone. We'll pick up that garbage while we're here. have a bucket full of dandelion flower heads and now we're going to head back to my house and we will make some play-doh see you there or you can put it out front in front of your own home and spread some joy that way I think I'm gonna put it that way here to make our dandelion play-doh today so first we went out and we picked our dandelions but now we're just going to pick try and get just the yellows so that we can get them boiling in a pot it's pretty tricky to get the the greens out there Now I saw in the recipe you can use the greens too, but I think I'm going to try and stick to mostly the yellows because I'm hoping that will help the color. And if some green gets in there, it's okay. I'm actually going to keep the whole flower petal in there when we make the whole play-doh when we mix it together because... Um, I think it'll be it'll add to the experience of it being a dandelion play-doh. And I also have lemon essential oil that I might add in the end depending on if it has a strong flowery scent or not. If not, then I'll add the lemon. If it does, then I won't.
just trying to get that green out so that we have the brightest. Look at the way that that broke apart. Cool. Alright. I am going to speed up the video so that this goes by a lot faster for you guys. And I will bring it back to normal speed when we're ready to put it in the boiling water. By the way, if you haven't started boiling water yet, start about two cups of boiling water. Um, that way by the time that it comes up to temperature and by the time that the uh, dandelions have had time to soak, that they um, that there will be enough water left. You want about a cup to a cup and a half of water left in the end. So I think that two cups starting is going to be a really good a good start. Also, you're going to want a good handful, probably like a good two hand scoop handful for this play-doh. That's what I think I'm going to try. So, preheat your ovens. I will stay here picking and I will slow the video done when, down when I am done. Well, my friends, that, I think, is probably enough dandelion. I don't know if you can see, but my hands are kind of tainted yellow, so if you don't want to be colored yellow by your dandelions, wear some gloves, but it'll wash off. It's all good. So, now, we're going to put our dandelions... You know, I don't think we're actually going to. It says you should put it through the blender, but... I don't know, because I kind of like these fibrous bits. I think if you were going to keep these ends on, you'd want to put it through the the um, blender. But I think because it's mostly just the flower bits, I think we're going to just throw that into our water. So let's go to the stovetop and take that little tiny bit out. We have our boiling water, and we have our pot, that's what I'm using, you can use a bowl, you can use anything, with our dandelions in it, and we're just going to toss them right into the boiling water. Okay, we'll grab a spoon. And please, if you are by the oven, use oven safety. 
If you should be with an adult, be with an adult, please. We don't want anybody getting hurt. And we're just gonna let that sit and boil for maybe two minutes. And then we will take it off the heat and let it sit for another 20. That way the water can really get that yellow color so that we can really get that nice color into our Play-Doh. We want to make sure we're going to stir it every once in a while so it doesn't burn to the bottom. And now we wait for one more minute. Wow, look at that color change. I don't know if you, oh yeah, you can see it in the video. Look at that. It is so yellow already. So it's been boiling for about two minutes. So I'm just going to take it off the heat. And I'm gonna remember to turn the burner off. So we will take it off the heat and we are going to let it sit for about 20 minutes or so, um, just so that it can the water really has a good chance to infuse that yellow color. Look at... While the dandelion and water boil, or sorry, while they rest on the stove, because they're not in the heat anymore, so while they just rest for that 20 minutes, we can get started on the next part of our process, which is mixing all of our dry ingredients. So, first we're going to start with two cups of flour. Now I only have my half cup measure here. So for two cups, we have one half. So we know that for one, we need two halves. So for two, we need four, because we're just doubling it. We need four one halves of flour. And four. Okay, we are going to need two tablespoons of cream of tartar. And this, I think, is the secret to Play-Doh. To successful Play-Doh, anyways, that lasts long and feels soft and nice. Uh, we'll call that one. And we'll call that two. Next on our list, we have the salt. And for salt, we need one and a half cups. So one and a half cups of salt. And then we are going to add our oil. One and a half cups of salt. We have a half. That means we need half, one, one and a half. We could have done that with our two cups too. Half, one, one and a half, two. So one and a half of salt. I wonder, depending on the different con um, kind of salt you use, how it would feel. I'm using table salt, so it's really, really fine. I'm wondering if you were to use the coarse salt, how, if it would be scratchy, or if it would still be fun to play with. Maybe we'll have to do that another day. Okay, so one and a half. And then we need two tablespoons of oil. You can use whatever oil you want. I'm going to use coconut oil because I have it and it's easy. And I like the smell of it. So two tablespoons. 
let's see. One. How much is that? Half maybe. And two. Sweetness. Put the lid on that. We'll set that aside. And we will mix our mixture of salt, flour, cream of tartar. I'm actually going to take my rings off before I get into this because I feel like it's going to get pretty sticky. And I don't really want them to be colored yellow. Up. And I'm not sure how it'll be different if you use vegetable oil as opposed to uh, coconut oil because the coconut oil is a little bit more solid. But I'm thinking that when we add the boiling water, it'll probably melt it anyway, so it probably won't make a huge, huge difference. And I am a huge, huge fan of mixing things with my hands. So if you are, I definitely encourage you to just be aware that because there is quite a bit of salt in here, if you have any little cuts, it might sting. Then you can do this with a spoon too, or a fork or anything really. All right, well that seems pretty well mixed. To me. So I'm going to leave this here and we'll wait for the timer to be done for our soaking dandelion flowers and then we will mix everything together and make our play-doh. I'll see you back here in a few minutes. We are back. Our timer has gone off so now we're going to strain our water mixture with our dandelion flower bits in it. <clears throat> make sure I'm not losing any of the flowerness. Alright. I'm going to give it a good stir around. And then we will pour it in. We ended up with quite a bit of water. That's okay. We want between um, around one and a half cups, but if we have a little bit more, it's okay. Because depending on how much flour we have, it might um, might require some more liquid. And the fact that we have our dandelion flower in here that would be accounting for some space too so I think we're probably good to use the full thing let's head over to the table we are back and on top of my freezer actually but it works great as a little table I love it it's the perfect tight okay so we are going we have our mixture here with our oil salt cream of tartar flour I think that's it <clears throat> in here already mixed now this is how warm is that that is still pretty warm but cool enough that I can touch it so be really really careful with this part if so ask an adult for help or if it's really hot or if you don't feel comfortable doing it with your hands um, definitely grab a spoon and you can do it with that too but I'm just going to use my hands so whatever is safest and whatever you are most comfortable with, do that. Now look at the color that I got. It's kind of like yellowish greenish. You can see the yellow in there though. I'm wondering when we start mixing it, once we start squeezing that yellow out, how much more yellow it's going to get. Alright, let's get to mixing. I think I'll probably pour half in first, mix this, and then 
we will go from there. Now, one of the words that I said earlier was the word sensory. Now, that's not a word that you might hear very often. And what I'm talking about when I say sensory experience is that's the experience, or the way that you're taking in the experience using all of your senses. So with your eyes, visually, with your ears, auditorily, with your taste buds, gustatory, with the way that your body moves, vestibular, with the way that something might have pressure on you, physically, that would be proprioceptive, there we go, look at that. And with the scent as well, it's our olfactory scent. So that's the smell of it. Now I think I may have added too much water. But that's okay, because we're gonna continue to mix it up. And if we need to, we can just add some more flour and salt. So yeah, sensory experience is thinking about an experience in all the ways that it affects you as a person. So in using all your seven senses. And tactile's the other one, that's your sense of touch. So if you're like me and love that goopy goodness, <laughs> as I call it, or like to, to play in that, this might be super, super fun for you too. Now, I think this is Goopy. So I'm going to just add a handful of flour and see what happens. So the reason we are keeping those flour bits in our Play-Doh is because we want to keep that part of our experience of picking the dandelion flowers and being out in the field. We want to remember all of that. We don't want to just throw all of those vital parts of our memories away so that's why we kept them in here so that we can see those beautiful little flower petals and we can see the green that would be the stems or the grass and it's we can see the color because of the yellow is coming through in our play-doh so that is thinking about an experience using all of your senses so this is why we're creating some dandelion sensory play-doh and you can do that with anything you could do it at the beach you could grab a jar grab some sand grab some rocks or shells grab some water maybe and that could be an experience memoir of your trip to the beach rather than just a picture there's so many different things you can do same with flowers, like you could probably use this same recipe, which I'm gonna post below. You could probably use that with like a whole bunch of different kinds of flowers. I really wanna try it with some of the pretty flowers, like some of the really brightly colored ones, the pinks and purples and reds. I'm wondering how they would transfer through because yellow is a pretty bright color. This is turning out pretty cool, my friends. I think we're almost there. I think I might add some more flour. And it's all a guessing game. We don't really know. And you can't really mess it up. So please don't worry about that. Don't be thinking, oh, mine doesn't look like Mrs. Mounts. Because trust me. Mrs. Mount doesn't even know if she's doing it right. And maybe yours is turning out better than mine. You might have a different technique. You may have added a different amount of water or flour. But that's the fun of it. You get to experiment. I love it. 
I think we're going to be going on much more adventures where we go out and collect things and then make things from it because I think that is so much fun. Who would have thought? Dandelion Play-Doh. What we can do too is we can add food coloring. I'm not going to, but if you wanted more of that brighter yellow color, you could definitely add some food coloring, and that could be for whatever color. If you use pink flowers, you use pink. If you use dandelions, you use yellow. Unless you want it to be a different color, that is. And we just mix. This is kind of like the same process. Reminds me of like kind of making bread, like when you're mixing bread. We'll do that in another video. That's another really fun thing to do. Well, my friends, look at that. Check that out. That is so cool. So you can see we've got the the lines of different petals. We've got that, it's a little bit of like an off yellow color. Doesn't really look yellow compared to the tablecloth, but compared to the white of the freezer, it's actually got some color. You can see our bits of green. Wow. That is so much too. That is so much fun. It's so squishy! Look at that squish. I encourage you all to do this. This is something you can do on your front yard. You could do this with grass. You could do this with any flowers that are growing around. Look, there's a stem there. But that's part of the experience. Even if you were picking flowers and you got a piece of grass in there, that's okay. Because grass was part of your experience. Now if you get bugs or something, I'd recommend taking those out. But, pretty neat. If you'd like to see more of these, let me know. I'm thinking we should. But you let me know. Let me know what you'd like to see. And that is our Daffodil Sensory Play-Doh. Thank you so, so much for joining me today, friends, for our rock delivery and our Play-Doh of awesomeness of dandelions. And we will see you next time. Stay limitless, learners.